Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele and today is August 27th, 2020. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about pricing a la GAN and a thought experiment for you. So, let's get to it, shall we? So, let's see where... here we go. This is WD GAN's famous coffee letter, as it's referred to. It says, May Coffee Santos D from March 19th, 1954. I 8729. Now, basically, Gan spends over half this letter. It's three pages, not quite three, like two and a half pages long. Gan spends over half this letter showing ways to convert the longitude of the planets into price. Okay. Now we can look right here at a price chart right here, and we have two. Uh, two axes right here we have the y axis which is price and then the x axis right here which is time right here so Gan's talking about the price axis right here when he's talking about converting the longitude of the planets into price and he gives a bunch of examples right here so this is definitely a good piece of information to read through multiple times I recommend you do that spend the time looking at the dates um, and just follow along with him with an ephemeris and I doubt that you'd have the price charts for this but you can still do the calculations with him. You might just find a discrepancy or two and you can ponder the fact that that's there and ask yourself did Gan actually make a mistake or was he trying to point to something else? You never know unless you actually do the research. So Basically, let's see, Gan says, where is he says, says apply the same rules to grains or any other commodity and by study and practice you will learn how to determine a change in trend from a strong to a weak position to a strong position. So, <clears throat> good piece of information to study. But this basically shows that Gan was in fact using the planets number one number two he was using the planets and converting the longitude into price and there's another example of that we have the um, very famous 1948 to 1949 May soybean chart where again actually has Mars plotted there and he has Jupiter plotted there he shows where Jupiter's entering a new sign and the conjunction happens between the two planets so he's clearly using the planets and he's clearly using the planet's longitude as a converter to price and he clearly does it in multiple different ways meaning he's not just using one degree for one point of price he has different calculations that he goes through and this letter goes through all that and I recommend that you spend some time with it it might just be helpful but with all that said I want to present a thought experiment to you let's look at the zodiac here shall we this is astrologue and this is August 27th today 953 current time so basically if we're looking at the solar system here we see the planets going around in a big circle because this is the longitude of the planets that's being displayed in this particular method or this way here and it shows us the degrees of the zodiac or the degrees of the circle and essentially if we were actually physically in space we would have to be above the solar system looking down on it and that would allow us to see the longitude of the planets in other words, we would see the planets orbiting the sun, so to speak, and create carving out a big circle. But, I mean, obviously it's not a complete circle. It's uh, elliptical in nature. But I want to change the view on you a little bit and let you think about that for a little bit. So here's the paint program, and I just want to draw a circle. So here's our solar system. We'll say that... Um, this right here is zero Aries okay and then you know here's I'll just put the four corners right here so what we have here is the equinox points and the solstice points so it's the cusp of the first sign cusp of the fourth seventh ninth or tenth rather 
so forth and so on. So what we want to do is if we're looking from the top down, we see our circles being made by the planets making their orbits, and that's the longitude. But if we look, if we move, if we imagine we're in space and we move so that the view of the solar system is no longer from the top, but from the side, it would essentially look like a line like this, essentially. All things being considered equal, we have a flat disk here as the solar system as opposed to when we look at it at the top we have this the big circle so as we're looking at it from the side we no longer have that circle and our perception of what the planets are doing when they orbit around changes dramatically when we look from the top we can see clearly that they're carving out essentially a circle and they're moving approximately the same speed obviously they slow down speed up a little bit because of the um, the oval that they're making, the elliptical nature of the orbit. But for all intents and purposes, they move at roughly the same speed the entire time through the orbit. But when observed from the side like this, as the planets get closer and closer to this section of the arc, if we carve little 45 degree sections right here to make this a little bit easier to mentally picture, from this point to this point, in the orbit would take almost exactly the amount of time that it took from this point to this point. But if we look, this point of the orbit lands right here when viewed from the side, while this point of the orbit lands right here in the edge. So we have a very small amount of movement happening, because when we look at the solar system from the side, all we see is the planets moving back and forth like this. We don't see a circular movement, we just see them moving this way, and then they stop, and then they move back this way. But this part of the orbit right here, this 90 degree segment, we only see the planet move this much. If the planet's right here and it orbits right here, then it moves from here to here. And if the planet's right here, right here, we see it move from here to here, right? So this section right here, from moving from here to here, takes almost exactly the same amount of time as it takes to move from here to here. But as viewed from the side, the planet moves a lot more distance in that same amount of time. So what we would actually see is if the planet was right here, it would move quickly and as it got closer and closer to the edge it would appear to slow down and slow down and slow down to the point where it stopped moving for a little bit and then it would appear to start moving again and start accelerating a little bit more and a little bit faster and it would move faster faster and faster until it got to this midpoint right here and that would be the point that it's moving its fastest speed through this back and forth motion and then it would appear to slow down again so not only would we not see the planet making the circle and just see this line and we not only see the planet moving back and forth but we would see the speed of the planet change tremendously moving back and forth right so hopefully you followed along everything that i've said so this is a side view of the longitude of the planets how we move there are some segments when viewed from a uh, stationary point where they the speed increases and moves very quickly versus another segment of the sideways view where it moves very very slowly okay so ponder that and think about that for a little bit and of course we have uh, the latitude which from the top we cannot really see the latitude differences of the planets but when we look at the solar system from the side view right here we can essentially see let me do this here we go how the planet's latitude moves up and down back and forth and we would see a significant change in latitude versus what we would be able to detect up here which would essentially be nothing if we're looking from the top we can't really observe the latitude very well. If we're looking from the side, the latitude becomes very obvious, but we have a very uh, skewed idea of what's happening with the longitude unless we are able to conceptualize the top-down view 
hopefully you understand that. So in other words, if all you ever have is this top-down view, you probably would not have conceptualized what it looks like from the side view. And the opposite of that is if you're only ever looking at the side view here and see the planet appear to go back and forth and change speed dramatically, you probably wouldn't have conceptualized a top-down view, right? So my recommendation to you is to contemplate things from different angles. And I don't just mean contemplate from here and then here and then here, but change your perspective in 3D space because it can be very, very helpful when you're trying to convert things to other things. So anyway, that's just today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you in the next one.